There are lots of reasons to sign up for the In The Money podcast newsletter. For one, you get to keep track of all the content we're pumping out around here, and there's been some great stuff, especially lately. For another, you have a chance to win some money. If you are an email newsletter subscriber, and it's free, and you put a comment on this YouTube video, or if you're listening to the podcast, you go to the YouTube video for this, Give us the winners of this weekend's three big prep races in a comment on YouTube and be signed up for the newsletter. That's the Florida Derby, of course, Arkansas Derby, and the Jeff Ruby Stakes. If you get it right, or whoever comes closest, you'll be in a drawing to win the $100 free bet we've got coming up for next weekend's prep races. Another reason to sign up for the newsletter for Keeneland opening day, we've got a free extra podcast JK giving his thoughts on the card, but that's only going to be for newsletter subscribers. Sign up today in the moneypodcast.com slash email. That's in the moneypodcast.com slash email. Hello and welcome to the In The Money Players podcast. This is an important show. This is our show for the races of Saturday, April 2nd, being recorded on Friday, April 1st, April Fool's Day, if you will. We haven't done enough good pranks, uh, April Fool's pranks in the history of this podcast. That's something we got to get on at some point. We'll, we'll put a note to do it for next year. But we're going to start off the show talking about the Triple Crown prep races. It's Triple Crown prep season. Officially, we've already got coverage all over in the moneypodcast.com, the Matt Bernier show. Been talking about these prep races all along. We have a lot more fun stuff coming down the pike, including this is pretty cool. We've got a listener auction for charity. We've got four seats to this year's Kentucky Derby. That's going to be going live on Monday. We'll have Kim Weir of the Thoroughbred Retirement Foundation here to chat with us about it. This was a gift from Churchill Downs to us here at uh, In The Money Media. We'll be doing that in addition to uh, some other contests. You may have heard about one before the show even started today and other stuff of that ilk. Two people who are going to be a key part of our coverage going forward. First, I will bring in the man to my side. He is back on the planet, Texas. He is the two-time Breeders' Cup betting challenge exacta runner up runner i hate saying that i gotta come up with something better he is from fox sports jonathan kitchen what's up jk i mean you're gonna have to figure it out pete because you know <laughs> if there was only a word that was like champion but for the person who finished second that that would be what we'd have for you yeah okay <laughs> that, that works for me yeah I'll just you know whatever uh, the place man the, the place <laughs> champion the place I'll champion work. I'm going to work on this this week. I won't do this to you again, I promise. And joining, as he does every week from his own eponymous podcast, TV's Matt Bernier. Matt, how are things? Is Breeders' Cup bridesmaid too <laughs> unkind? That's pretty good. I'll take it. That's pretty good. Rolls, it rolls a little bit better than the first intro does. Yeah, yeah it's hard. I'll, I'll I, take I, it. I, yeah, that's much better, Matt. That's, see, that's, Breeders' Cup betting challenge bridesmaid. Huh? BC, BC, <laughs> BM. BC, BC, BM. BC, BC, BM. Yeah, yeah. Cool now that. that gets us into a whole other bit of hot water, so we got to be careful there. But Matt, that's see, that's why uh, that's why your TV's Matt Bernier coming up with these things on the spot. I have an assault to report as we start the show today. If you notice, I'm sweating. It's it's Kendall Tool's fault, JK. I, I did her 20 minute metal ride this morning, and I should have done it. I should have waited till after the show. So if I appear to be you know melting or anything, uh, blame her. I did not get the proper cool down in. But uh, we need to talk about these important races happening this weekend. We'll start off with one that I've talked about uh, pretty much ad nauseum over on the Gulfstream Park Players Podcast. And I'm really curious to get a new perspective on these races with the, th with the thought that uh, I might be missing something. This race in particular, the Grade 1 Florida Derby, uh, going the mile in an eighth at Gulfstream on Saturday, 6.38, the scheduled post time according to Timeform US. Matt Bernier, let's bring you in first. For your thought on this one, who's going to win the Florida Derby? Maybe I'm a little closed minded. I don't like any of the Florida horses that have run in, in the road to this race. So simplifications, not for me. White Abario has got to prove to me that he's really this good. And everybody else ran behind them. So I don't want any of those horses. Uh, Classic Causeway. I like him. I think he's a good horse. But if we're being honest, I think this is going to be the, the biggest or the stiffest test that he's faced all season here. I thought his run through Tampa was very professional. He did what he was supposed to do, but I think he needs to really take another step if he's going to win a race like this. 
kind of by default, I'm going to land on the horse that I think probably goes off favored. I think it's Charge It. Uh, I, I like what Pletcher does with these sort of horses. I like the two two one-turn races that he's run so far. Um, the pedigree suggests that distance isn't going to be an issue for him. Depending on what figs you use, he's run as fast, if not faster, than any of the other horses in this race. He does have some things to overcome. This will be first time without Lasix, first time against winners, first time going two turns. So it's not as though the hurdles aren't insignificant. Uh, but I just don't really love anybody else, and I think this could be a very good horse, so I'm going with Charge It. He's my top pick as well. I think he's the best bred and fastest horse in the race. I have the personal bias as well from Todd Pletcher coming on the Gulfstream Park Show before his first ever race, and speaking of this one in glowing terms, there is a worrisome stat. We used to play a, a game on this show called Good Stat, Bad Stat, and I pulled the numbers, Matt, for Todd Pletcher maiden winners into grade ones now obviously this is actually not as uncommon as you might think with two-year-olds it's pretty darn uncommon with three-year-olds but pulling a stat for all of them 0 for 12 in the last five years you know which is i guess kind of to be expected but one thing that struck me is a lot of them bet only two even hit the board does that give you any pause yeah, I mean, those are the sort of numbers. So the 0 for 12 wouldn't bother me. The thing that would bother me is the lack of them actually hitting the board. That to me is there's a little bit of something there because it takes some, you got to have a little bit of luck to win some of these races. So 0 for 12, small sample size, you don't want to draw too many conclusions from. But no, I mean, it's definitely something to take note of that for whatever reason. I mean, look, this is a tough move going from maidens to grade one company. Um, I think maybe I would feel differently if I thought this this field was littered with superstars. And I just I just don't right now. Based on what they've done, I've got enough questions that I want to take a fresh face that I think has more upside than any horse in this race. We'll get to your overview of the race in a second, JK. But I'm curious to ask you if that stat bothers you. I'm also curious to ask you if you think Matt's right, that Charger could go off the favorite in this spot. Yeah, no, I think he can go off favorite. And, and I, yeah, I mean, it's not a great stat, but I think it – I think it tells more of a story about, I think it tells more of a story than it does on the surface. I think that with your point of, of doing that with three-year-olds, typically he's probably doing that playing from behind. He's doing it with a horse that didn't have a two-year-old year. So broke the maiden as a three-year-old. And now what do you do? You have to go to a stake because you're trying to get in to the Derby and you're playing from behind. And, and so it, it just, to me, it's one of those stats where it just takes the right animal basically to kind of break that stat. Um, and I think when you look on paper with or without that stat, you can tell that Pletcher's playing from behind with this horse. So, um, so to answer, so that's the answer to that question. The other part of it is I, I, if, if classic Causeway wasn't in here and we all know he's one of those horses that make handicapping races easier because you know, what's going to happen. They're going to go. There's no way they're going to rate. They tried that before. It didn't work. They decided to slip in this race. Why change his style now? He clearly doesn't like it. You don't need it to get into the race. This is probably just a little bit more of a glorified prep anyways. And if we win it, we win it. Let's just run and, and, and let him do his thing. So you know he's going to go. And I think that's a little bit of a concern for me when it comes to charge it. He is, is last time he was loose. He's not going to be loose this time. He's going to have to pressure a horse like this who's going to make him earn it early if, if charge it decides to stay close. I was thinking Charger didn't necessarily need the lead the way that he uplined last time and that he might be okay settling and, and, and going. But you know, wrap that wrap a reaction to that idea, JK, into your overall thought on well, the race. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree with what, what, you, what you're saying. But to, to wrap in what you and Matt have already said is at a short price, I'm not willing to do that thing that you just did, which is like, well, I mean, he, he looks like he could probably do it. And you're <laughs> probably right. But at, at nine to five, do you want to play that game? Um, and multi-race, we're talking two different things here. Multi-race bets, I think you have to use charge it. I don't need classic causeway, to be fair. So I think you can kind of you can kind of lean on charge it as your speed of the speed type of horse and then look for other situations. But I, I think the three simplification is going to run well in here. And I agree with Matt. I'm not I'm not overly excited about the fountain of youth or the holy bull. But what I will say about simplification is as he is a horse that will pass horses he is a horse that's going to get a little bit of a setup here um and and because of that i do trust him a little bit more to be running on late when a horse like classic causeway i expect to be stopping and a horse like charge it has to prove it to me at a short price 
charge it could keep running and he could run 103 buyer and he could go off as the third choice in the derby it's very possible that that could happen but at a short price and for this race i'm going to focus a lot of what i do on simplification picking up tired horses because i, I feel like the, the pace is going to be honest in here that makes sense to me and i do think simplification has been a little bit better than the bear paper looks to me and maybe matt you don't agree but i feel like he's overcome stuff in both of the last two runs even though he was successful he's not like some horse that's been handed things on a silver platter uh, what but you, do you do you not agree do you think he's had better trips than i think he's had no, no. I, and don't get me wrong. He's not a bum. You know, I'm, I'm making him out to be a horse that can't pick his feet up. I mean, he, he certainly has some ability. I, I think for me, there have been enough. I'm getting real nitpicky. There have been enough professionalism things that bother me with him. Uh, two starts back. He was a little bit slow out of the gate. He's never changed leads in either of these two runs. And I think I think the runs have had more to do with the company he's run against than himself just as far as the horse is concerned. The numbers would suggest otherwise that he fits very well in here. He's arguably the horse to beat. I just, I don't know, for a horse that I just don't love the way that he's gone about doing things, I, I, I'm still dubious. Um, yeah, now, fair. now, having said that, maybe Saturday's still going to be, you know, totally fine for him. I guess thinking down the road, I just, unless he does something totally different on Saturday, I, I'm having a hard time looking at him as a Kentucky Derby prospect, as a horse that can win a race like that. Maybe he wins Saturday. Um, I just, I don't know. I don't love him. I, I couldn't I couldn't agree more with what Matt said, because here's the thing. If Classic Causeway was not in here, I'd be a single charge it type of guy. And just kind of lay, you know, just kind of put it all on the line and die on that hill with him. Because he'll get loose in here. He, he was tactical last time. He had a good figure last time. He's going to improve for Todd. Just with Classic Causeway in here being one way, speed it makes me a little bit concerned about charge it at a short price so that's why i lean on simplification but i'm telling you right now ahead of time i don't care what simplification does on saturday because he's if he runs a big race he's going to have gotten a setup if he runs a big race i don't believe he's going to overcome adversity and win the florida derby if he does that then maybe i'll change my mind and i'll backpedal but i don't see that happening i want nothing to do with him after saturday i just think he's the horse on saturday but he's like a not use on any ticket type of horse for me in the Derby. All right. All right. Based on the known form, I, I could see where you're both coming from. One other quick point, just to piggyback on Matt's point about simplification and just the general concept of horses that end up having a lot of trips. You can look at it two ways. You can look at it like my way of looking at it is, oh, look, you know, he's done well and he hasn't had trips. How good, how well is he going to do when he gets a trip? The other thing is, well, you know, maybe he hasn't had trips because he has something fundamentally that's that's not great about his alacrity out of the starting gate or ability to change leads and hit spots, et cetera, et cetera. So just two different ways of looking at the world as ever. We'll let the tote board be the God. Part of my pick and charge, it was thinking he would not be the favorite, but it's interesting that both you guys think he might be. We'll see how it all plays out on Saturday. Let's pivot, though, to another major grade one prep race. It is the Arkansas Derby going a mile and an eighth around Oakland Park with a field of nine signed on J.K., you teased your thoughts on this one a little bit earlier in the week as you've had a chance to look at it a little bit more. Who's your selection in this year's Arkansas Derby? Yeah, I mean, it's more my anti-selection. Like, look, Secret Oath, um, I, I, you know, I, I, as a sporting fan of the game and and, and someone who basically has Zenyatta and – well, not basically, I do have Zenyatta and Rachel tattooed on my arm. Like, I like it and I get it, right? I, I get the excitement of it. I, I, I get that. Um, I get what it does to the fans. I get what it does – to half of the population. It's fun and it's exciting to watch it happen. She's just no superstar. She's a good horse. I would try to beat her in the fantasy. You know what I mean? Like I, I just, she's just not, <laughs> she has not done that thing that puts her in the category of the, the price that she's going to be bet down to. And so sure she can win, but I'm going to try to beat her. I'm going to try to beat her with a couple of horses. I, I don't care who trains doppelganger basically it's all the same at this point. You know what I mean? I do think it's interesting. The blinkers are coming off. Is that a Tim Yachtin thing? Or was that something that Bob was going to do anyways? Um, I, I can't imagine that Tim Yachtin is going to get this horse and say, Oh, Bob was making a mistake. And here we go. I, I just, I don't see that being the case. So I think doppelganger is extremely live in here. And you'll probably get an okay price for people trying to beat him. Cause he's not with Baffert and because they're betting the Philly. Um, I think Cyberknife is a little bit interesting off of the last race as an alternative. And then We the People is, is another horse I'm going to try to beat Secret Oath with. And and I talked about it earlier in the week, and, and I didn't know if Matt had heard it yet. And so, and I don't know if the people listening have heard that, so I'll repeat it. But um, 
Lafitte Pinkai when doing some interviews with some with with Ron Moquette leading up to some of the you know a stake prior in the Oakland meet. He asked him the question of, you know, which which derby horses have you been impressed with? And this is the horse that Ron Moquette said, if he could pick any horse on the grounds to be in his barn, it would be we the people based on the way that he was working in the morning. And he's and he and he came back since and he ran up to that to that statement. So I think the outside draw for him, he's another type of horse that I think can run well. So if you're if you're nailing me to a pick, I'll take Doppelganger. But I do think that those three horses are the horses I'm going to try to beat secret oath with because i think there's going to be tons of value in doing that matt very curious to bring you in for your thought on this one who's going to win well very similar to the florida path i don't want any of the boys that have been on the arkansas road to this race just because i don't think any of the races have been any good so the four horses jonathan laid out those are the only four that i can see a winner coming out of if it's somebody else one of the other five then i will lose everything with that but um so i like the way that jonathan laid out the secret oath sort of anti-case because if it's purely just on the fact that she's going to be over bet and she doesn't have any real edge on this field i'm i totally understand that and i'm on board with that honestly it's the people and that's the only thing i've thrown out there because i had seen so many folks bringing up the idea of well you could burn her up against the boys this time of year i go if you took the f out of her pps and put a c or a g does she not stack up against the i, I don't care that she's a girl it doesn't make a difference to me she, it, it, that, that's not going to be why she wins or loses this race or because she's not fast enough if she doesn't get it done. Having said that, I think she has as good a chance as anybody in this race. Doppelganger to me is kind of the wild card because I had a hard time deciding what I thought of that San Felipe. You know, when you have a horse that wins as impressively as Forbidden Kingdom does, somebody has to finish second. Did he finish second because he ran really well or just because there was nothing else in that race? I don't know what to do with that. We'll find out on Saturday. Um, cyber knife. I don't love him. I, I think he's got quirks. I think he's got to figure some stuff out. I know we've heard that he's a little bit immature and a little bit green. I also don't love that his two best races, as far as numbers are concerned, came with Lasix. He won't have Lasix in this race. Um, and we, the people is kind of the, the other one. If it's not secret oath for me, it's we, the people. Um, I, I thought that run at Oakland was very similar stylistically to Zozo's run prior to the Louisiana Derby very tepid pace, was able to kick away. You don't know how that's going to translate. And look, Zozos looked like a good horse, and I thought he ran very well in the Louisiana Derby. I expect something similar with this horse, uh, We the People. I'll just be very curious what kind of trip he pulls from out there. I mean, are they going to be intent on trying to go, or are you going to take up kind of a flanking position and say, you know, we'll let somebody else do the dirty work? I guess when I go through the PPs, I mean, who, who's really the other speed? Down on the inside, It's it's got to be Cavett or Cavad. And then maybe we, the people sits just off him. But um, for me, it was secret oath. We, the people, and then kind of, you know, a, a beeline would be doppelganger and cyber knife. All right. So sort of a six, nine on the top line four eight underneath for Matt. I like cyber knife and I'm, maybe I'm being persuaded by the morning line. The generous maybe morning line of eight to one, but I did think this is a horse that's improving. Who's shown in races, as Matt pointed out scope to maybe improve more with four works for Cox, with competitive figure, progressive profile. But the main thing was you jumble up the odds, and I was guessing it might be a correct odd. I, I might jumble up my pick here. I think the guys have done a good job uh, of breaking this one uh, down. But I think, for me, Cyberknife, interesting. And I have to, I think, as a Forbidden Kingdom backer for the Derby, want – I'm rooting for Doppelganger to do well, but I also think he has the profile to potentially step up and do well. I was looking to get eight and four out on the top line in the Arkansas Derby. Let's talk about the third points getting race. Not quite the same level uh, of the other two in terms of uh, Derby prep, but certainly an interesting race from a, a wagering point of view as we have a big full field in the Jeff Ruby stakes. Go the group three mile and an eighth on the synthetic at Turfway. You guys have a quick thought on this one, Matt, I'll throw it to you first. Well, I, I really did like black adder. And now we find out that he's not going to run here. He's going to run in the bluegrass next weekend. Uh, I don't know if that's a vote of confidence for him or it's a vote of confidence for uh, Rudolph Brissett's other horse, the one that I now will land on. Um, I've always thought Great Escape had potential. Now, his run in the Breeders' Futurity in a race that really hasn't come back to be all that strong. I wanted it to be better than it has been, and it just hasn't really panned out. Um, I, you know, I'm going to draw a line through that. He was gone for a long time after that. I thought the return effort at Oaklawn was solid. He was the only real part of the early pace that was around late. It kind of fell apart. And he got a little tired at the end. I think he can benefit from that and take a step forward. 
Um, the pedigree, you know, Midnight Storm, it's, it's limited data, so you can't really draw too many conclusions just yet. But I think the horse should be able to handle the surface. And, you know, I think just that the raw numbers, when you take a look at the, the racing form, the numbers for Rudolph Brissett, second off 45 to 180 day layoff, they don't look very good over 26. Um, but if you go past five years, second after a 140 day layoff or greater, which is what this horse is going to be doing in route races, he's eight for 31. 18 of them have hit the board with an 1160 ROI, and he's got winners of 17 to 1, 46 to 1, and 88 to 1 in that sample. So I, clearly, the, the trainer is more than capable. I'm not worried about that. I think the horse is a little interesting in a race that I think is wide open. I want to get a horse that I think will be a decent enough price, and uh, Great Escape is that. So that's where I'm going to go. That's a good pull on that stat. I love that way specifically of using trainer stats. My favorite ways to use them, maybe find a reason to not lump all on a favorite, maybe find a reason to include a long shot. And one great way of doing that is to look tools like formulator, let you go back and look at the trainer and the horses in the category. You can look at the, look at the winners and look at the pattern and you'll find things that way. And, and, and that's a really interesting nugget and a horse I'm definitely going to include based on Matt say so JK, how about you? Your thought on the Jeff Ruby. I know you like Jeff Ruby stakes, but who do you like in the Jeff Ruby stakes? Yeah. You know, I like Jeff Ruby stakes. I like the name of the race, Jeff Ruby stakes stakes. I just like to say it. It's fun. Um, well, I mean, look, you know, tis the bomb and, and, and stolen base are two horses that you just, yeah, okay, sure. They, they can win and maybe they will, and they deserve to be the price they are. They've run well on the surface and so on and so forth. Um, but the one horse that I'm really interested in, who's now going to draw in, oh, and to answer your question of what I think about black adder is I would guess this is one of those, we drew poorly. Let's go in another race thing. I don't think it's that bad on this surface and the way this track plays, but whatever. I, that would be my prediction. I don't know for sure. Um, I don't think it's a confidence thing. So basically you can save your money. You don't need to bet the horse in the bluegrass. Um, the 13 swing shift is a horse that I like. It reminds me a lot of sainthood last year. Sainthood was that type of horse that had that uh, Mashawish, right? So that, that, that pedigree from a sire who ran on both surfaces. And I know that's a real easy kind of, lazy way to think that the horses are going to handle it but it kind of makes sense if a horse can handle the dirt and the turf then they'll probably produce animals that can handle that thing that's right in the middle i don't know makes sense to me like you said with a with kind of a, a small sample and so you get a little midnight storm here who was was proficient on both surfaces but i like swing shift for a couple of reasons one is this horse is tactical has speed todd pletcher runners their big races they run, they're three wide, three wide, sitting off the pace around there. That's how they're trained. Um, he's going to draw into the field, obviously, with the 12 scratching. He's going to be to the outside. He's not going to get stopped. You know he's going to be dead fit from, from training like Todd trains them on the dirt. And he's going to be a nice price. And like I said, he reminds me a little bit of sainthood where he just needed a little bit of class relief and he needed to get on a surface where maybe he's not as good on the dirt, but he can he can kind of fake it a little bit when it comes uh, to the synthetic surface. So uh, that'll be my top choice in here. I'm like you said, I, I don't know who's going to win this damn race. And it's there. These races are very hard for me um, on synthetic. And, and, and if it's not one of those top two choices, it could be anybody. So give me, uh, give me the guy with the gray hair that's in the hall of fame that wins a lot of these races uh, towards the outside at a big price. You make a bunch of good points. And for those that don't remember sainthood, this was a horse. This was a big winner for you. I think both on the show and on, on TV. Was it last year, Jake? I think he ran second though. I don't think I didn't he run second and like almost get, did he get almost get put up or he was interfered with. That's so I funny. I, second, though. I thought I remembered you. I thought I remembered personally giving you a lot of credit for the pick, which made me think that I thought you won, but maybe. Well, not. I think it was, I, <laughs> this is a weird thing to say. I think you were giving me credit because it was a good pick, right. even though the horse didn't win. You know what that I'm happens a lot. It's always more fun when they do though. You can, <laughs> bring, if you want to look that up and let people know. No, he ran, he ran second to he like the second. king. Yeah. yeah. Oh, like the king. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And he maybe got, he got, you might he have got given up exact in that race. Cause I think you liked, like the king too. It was a two-turn. If it was a two-turn race, I did not give out Wesley. I can assure you of that. <laughs> <laughs> the memory fails, folks. This is what happens when you get old. My quick thought on this race is, and maybe I'm just a card-carrying member of the Brad Cox fan club, but I like Tawny Port getting back onto the synthetic. 
for Cox and Manny Franco. And I, I think should be able to get a good trip, saving some ground, has some finish. I think jocks are going to get excited, derby points on the line, et cetera, et cetera. I think this pace will develop. I think Tony Port will run on and at least get a little bit of a piece of this. It's a chaotic race, but it's uh, an interesting one too. Matt, just for our official reckoning of the race, did you have any you wanted to mention as uh, backups or anything like that? Or are you just great escape to the hoop? Yeah, I was just kind of right in the middle, six, seven, eight. Um, Tis the bomb, I think, you know, is fine, but just fine. I don't think he's a superstar. And and the same can be said for for Red Run. I thought Red Run had a really good setup in that run at Sam Houston. But to be fair, that was first start off of a bit of a layoff, came with a good run, finished it out. Um, you know, and to Jonathan's point, you know, stolen base, sure, he could win. Maybe the blinkers are going to be the thing that that changes him up. But to me, he's a, he's a bit more of a nibbler than than a horse that wants to actually get the job done. But no, I mean, uh, the, the only other thing I will add, you brought up Tawny Port. I think he comes out of arguably the most important race of the entire season. Uh, we'll find out next week when we see what Smile Happy and Zandon do. But maybe that Tawny Port, or excuse me, the uh, Risen Star form can continue to kind of, you know, if this horse runs big on Saturday and then we find out what those two horses do next Saturday at Keeneland. Uh, I think that Risen Star is probably going to be kind of the key form line as far as the Kentucky Derby is concerned. And Cabo Spirit, I, I wouldn't totally sleep on him coming in from California. Draw a line through the two dirt races. I'm not worried about those. You know, his, his turf form is actually quite good. I, I don't know if it'll transfer or not, but if you're looking for someone outside of the, the more logical runners, I mean, maybe Cabo Spirit is one you can throw in at a, which should be a decent price, I would think. Lots of Kentucky Derby clues available this weekend. I'll close out this segment with a tribute to the woman who had me sweating through the whole thing. JK, you're worthy. Um, you showed up. They can knock you down, but they will never knock you out. 